Okay, so yesterday's little bit of work, I did a lot of wiring. So, I got the plug for the alternator, worked out which way the wiring goes, and the actual alternator is charging, it's charging quite well. Um, this is the wire going back to the battery. Um, I rigged up the glow and I rigged up the raw water. Um, I just tried to tidy that up, rigged up the starter motor properly. I actually found this old switch I had um, and I managed to wire it up and it's got all the bits and pieces so I can glow it from there. It's got the ignition, the signal for the alternator, um, the starter, so it all seems to work. So I rigged up that battery again, the diverter for the two batteries. I rigged up that up as well. So just let's see. So I've got the key here now to that. So Thanks. So first, first click is glow. So I was doing some practicing yesterday. Probably about thirty seconds seems to be a good little amount. Um, and then she seems to fire up, oh, but doesn't doesn't crank very well. So I'm not too sure how that good that um, dual battery switch is. I might do some testing whether it's an earth or. It should crank for a little motor, a little motor this big. It should crank a little bit faster. So I oh know that should have glowed enough now. I'll see if it fires up. So it hasn't started since yesterday, so. That's a good little test for it. Um, so I went to the shops today and because the next step is to get oh, all of this working so I was just trying to make head or tail of it. It's all buggered. I pulled all I pulled all these things off the wall and it's all rusted and the ends the ends of the wires where they're going into the joiners seem to be corroded and busted, so uh, I'm just going to start again, I think. Um, I bought some of these ones. Um, yeah, I bought a couple of these, so um, so just putting the power on here and then everything's powered up. And these stupid things, you can see for them to get power or earth, they put these loop wires to get their, um, get some to each one. So this one um, is you bolt it on and it's instantaneous, you have to just plug them in, away you go. So the next step is the electrics. I have, this is what was in the boat prior. Um, I suppose I can just clean it, clean it up. There's well, one, two, three, four, five, four, two, four, six, nine, nine switches should be ample for what I'm going to try and do. Or maybe, um, I mean, it's all, it's actually, it's not badly done. So, a couple of holes here for the, Maybe radios or something like that. So, you yeah. know, goes there. It's not that bad. So, here's all the radio. I've got to work all this. Uh, work that out. So, it's already. Where does it go? Uh, okay. Some wires go, go forward. So, um, 
I'm in two minds what to do, so I'm going to have to put a, my, I've got my, my car fridge. I'm going to maybe kind of try to mount it in here, but I was concerned that maybe that's your bunk, so you lose, you know, you lose somewhere to sleep, so I, was, I don't know what to do actually, because there's, there's that, that spot there, but I don't think it's going to be big enough unless I cut into there, but I don't really want to do that either, so, um, still in two minds what to do, I might even see if I can whack it down there, um, that might be a, cause that, that lifts up because the toilet's around the corner, so it might be another option, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe we'll get to that stage, let's worry about the electrics first and then we'll, um, get to that stage. I've just been pricing a battery for my deep software battery to run my instruments and it seems to be the lithium is the way to go. Um, it seems to be that with the AGMs or the the acid filled batteries that um, when it gets to a certain point say when the voltage drops below you know like 12 11 volts that the battery sort of doesn't does the instruments won't actually work but the lithium actually virtually keeps going till it's virtually empty before it drops voltage so it means the, the instruments can run pretty much a lot longer because it's got a the basic difference it's available even though it sounds great one's a so many amp hours but it's only availability is not that great because they can discharge maybe 30 or 40 percent before it cuts out the, the lithium battery can actually run until there's virtually nothing left of it and still deliver you know, above 12 amps, which are uh, 12, sorry, 12 volts. So to me, they're a little bit more expensive, but it seems to be a, a lot better option as far as uh, that goes. And then, um, but I worry about setting up the rest of the stuff before I get too carried away with um, buying batteries and solar panels and whatnot. Hi, I just uh, make a short video on the projects that I've taken on and where I've got with them since coming back to Australia pretty much about 16 years ago after a, a long stint overseas working drilling and living in the Philippines and that um, so this is the first one I decided to take on was this uh, it's a 1971 Ford Fairlane I'll probably add some more photos. I've got some better photos of that, but I did that. It's this is complete. This engine spent nine grand on the engine, done all the body work. It's beautiful, but it's the thing with projects. I just enjoy working on things. I'm not too interested in driving. I'm going to drive. I just drive my own car. Um, but it's been sitting here. It's a beautiful car. I'm, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with it, but it doesn't cost me any money. I got the space, so I'll just let it sit here. Um, from that one, I moved on to virtually after about a couple of weeks after finishing the fair line, I moved straight into this one. So I'm not going to pull it apart, but it's a um, XW Ute. What's that? A 1969, I think it is, and it is. Um, it has a ZA. Fairlane front end because that's not how XW's come out. XW's had a single headlight, uh, not a double like this. Um, this car has a ZD Fairlane um, dash. If you can see it, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a ZD Fairlane dash. Um, and top it off, it has. XY tail lights. So to me it's I know it's not exactly the genuine but it's to me I it's beautiful. So um this is drivable. I've, I've, I drove this around. It's actually all I gotta do now is finish off the interior and this thing's done and maybe put uh, a strip down the side making a bit of a GT style. Um and that one's done. So um so for then, after that project, then I moved, now I started getting into the um, boating, so I actually 
bought this boat and um, again couldn't help myself it had a 350 Chev in it so which will pain the ass so I ended up just getting it and converting it so you can see that to this pod in the back put the Yami 200 horsepower on that two stroke and then converting all the inside of it and then I don't know probably he <laughs> dropped about twenty thousand dollars but this is a beautiful boat that's 40 knots you know this is by but then you know started getting sick and tired of this thing so parked it up there's nothing wrong with it it's, it's spot on um then I decided to what the hell I thought I'd build a, a drill rig so I built that but that's basically from scratch I actually went down to the steel shop and bought some steel and just started knocking it up I had a bit of an idea in my head what I wanted and um, came up with that and that rig's done really well it's, uh, I've earned a lot of money with that rig um, there's nothing wrong with it I could probably crank it up now and drill a hole and then if you've got one rig why not make a second one <laughs> just so I had nothing to do <laughs> so that's a smaller rig that I built um, it's uh, I made it for the little little jobs getting under carports and getting into people's gardens just a little bit of a niche thing um, then after that I started to get back into the old boating thing again. So I'll, I'll show you what I started with my boating, on the, the water side of things. So then I decided, hey, sea kayaks, fishing sea kayaks. So it's a great idea. So I ended up buying that grey one. That looks like it's brand new, that one. It's very good condition. And then I bought the second one. I have to do some work on that. But again, good, really good. Took it out, but Aris was not too keen. He ended up having to tow him most of the time, so he just get get out down the ocean, and he just give up and decide he wasn't going to paddle anymore. So I'd have to tow, put a tow rope on him, and tow him back. But so that was a pain in the bum. So yeah, so I thought, well, okay, let's. What's the next step? So I went from these things to these two jet skis. So the one on the left is a Quacker. It's a um, 1200cc. Um, two stroke it's a beautiful jet ski heaps of power and then on the right is a another 1200 two stroke it's a Yami um, again <laughs> I thought this is my next project so basically I ended up buying five jet skis and just basically buying them that they were said they were busted or not working and then just fixing them and then by the time I um, sold the other three once I'd fixed them I ended up getting basically both of these for free, the amount of money. So um, that's an old trailer I had. For, it was my, a bike trailer that I had for the bikes. So I ended up making it into a jet ski trailer and put that rack up there in case we put the biscuits and life jackets and when we go camping. So that was that project. And then once I finished that, I thought, well, I need another project, don't I? So if I went from the jet skis to this one <laughs> so now this one's in progress um, as you can see that I just live for projects like this is what why I built the shed and for me for my mental health this is what I live for is to doing projects and um, seeing them through and then hopefully hopefully I do more sail out it'd be a bit of a waste if I just fix this up and then um, don't do much sailing so I think I will because I really really enjoyed oh the surf cat I haven't showed the surf cat but yeah the surf cat come before this one second 